Hello everyone, welcome back to Talking History. My name's Liz, thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you're all keeping well. On this channel, I do exactly as it's called, I talk all about history. So I'll do a little disclaimer for anyone new who's watching. I am not an historian, I'm just someone who is extremely passionate about history and I love to share that passion with you. After all, history is extremely important. Mm. <laughs> um, last week I done a video on Malcolm III of Scotland, so if you haven't seen that yet I will link that up there or down there. It would be somewhere for you to find, for you to watch. And also whilst you're there, could you please click that subscribe button? And also can we um, like and share this channel so we can reach more and more history lovers like yourselves. That's my intro. I'm trying to get better at intros. I'm still not that good. I never quite know what to say or which, or which order. I just... Blah, 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 blah. Anyway. Um, today's video, I'm going to do a video on Malcolm's younger brother, Donald III, who was also known as Donald Bain to Shakespeare's Macbeth. And if he is someone you are interested in, then please do stay tuned. When Malcolm III died in 1093, Scotland had seemed to put the dynastic divisions to rest and Malcolm had a long and stable reign and he also had several sons. So when Malcolm was killed at battle, it came as quite the, the surprise and his death had sent Scotland into a chaotic period of internal conflict, mainly due to his younger brother and immediate successor, Donald. So Donald quickly seized the Scottish throne for himself, um, but Malcolm's sons, they weren't just going to sit back and let their uncle take the throne. We're just like, hang on, that's, that's ours. What are you doing? You know. And um, they also had the support of the English king, King William, King, king William II, William Rufus. But before we do go into Donald's story, I think we need to do a little bit of background so we know where Donald has suddenly sprung from. Now, Scotland's succession system went from brother to brother rather than father and son. Now, if we go back to the Anglo-Saxon period with Alfred the Great, before Alfred the Great went to the primogenitor um, their succession system was also brother to brother before it went from father to son. So, now Malcolm, um, his reign had proved to be quite pivotal within the Scottish history as Malcolm had brought Scotland quite literally kicking and screaming out of the Dark Ages into the medieval period. So Malcolm had not hadn't killed not one but two of his predecessors that was Macbeth Shakespeare's Macbeth and his stepson Lulloch and he also put down a rebellion in their territory and after that he hadn't had any more opposition so Malcolm had also married Margaret of Wessex and he had also um invaded England, mostly Northumbria, and he had also supported his brother-in-law, Edgar the Aetheling, who was the last Anglo-Saxon prince. And all of that had brought him into the firing line in the new Norman rule in England after 1066. Now, his marriage to Margaret wasn't overly popular at the Scottish court. There were certain nobles who thought that both Malcolm and Margaret um, were favouring the Saxon exiles in Scotland. So when Malcolm died unexpectedly at Alnwick in 1093, along with their eldest son, Edward, 
Margaret herself had died just days after, it led to a range of groups who wanted to move Scotland back into the Dark Ages. So enter Donald. Scottish medieval chroniclers weren't overly keen on taking too much notice of when their kings were born. So it's likely that Donald was born sometime around 1033 to 1040, which it would have made him around 60-ish when he became king in 1093. Now, Donald was the youngest son of Donald the F Duncan I, and his mother was possibly a woman named Southern. Now, the Bane nickname means the fair or white, so it's quite possibly referring to his hair colour, either from his youth when his hair was fair, or when the time he actually got to be king when his hair was white. So Donald's father, Duncan, was killed by Macbeth in 1040. Now, in Shakespeare's Macbeth, the two brothers, Malcolm and Donald Bain, discuss what they should do and they decide to go their separate ways. Donald Bain to Ireland, but in reality, Donald, who would have been at most seven years old when his father was killed, so it's highly unlikely that he actually had any control over what happened next. The brothers did seem to have gone in separate directions. Donald, he went west to either Ireland or the Hebrides. Whilst Malcolm, he had gone south to Northumbria. Now Malcolm, he would return to Scotland in 1058 and become king. But there is nothing known of Donald's exile and it may have been possible that he didn't even return to Scotland until Malcolm's death in 1093, making his exile 53 years long. So given Donald's long absence and the fact that Malcolm had many sons it was quite surprising that he hadn't even attempted to become king let alone succeed scotland had hadn't yet had firm walls in place on their succession so but donald's great great grandfather kenneth had attempted to have the primogeniture legislated where the throne would go from king to his eldest son. But it hasn't yet been pursued successfully. Um, so not quite over the old system yet. So for the succession to go between brothers before going to the next generation, in technically under that old system, Donald was the rightful heir. But considering the length of time that Donald had been absent from Scotland, um, it was most certain that Malcolm would have intended for one of his many sons to have succeeded him. Now, Duncan, who was his eldest son from his first marriage, and then you had um, Edward, Edmund, Edgar, Alexander and David from his second marriage to Margaret. Now, unfortunately, both Malcolm and Margaret died within days of each other in 1093. And so did their eldest son, Edward. Now, Duncan, he had been in England for many years, whilst Edmund, who was probably recognised as the heir, but it wasn't clear on who should be the next king. Now, there could have been you know, strong elements at court who would have seen this as an opportunity to get rid of, to rid Scotland of Margaret's English allies, which has sometimes been seen or known as the Gaelic 
reaction. So Malcolm and Margaret's sons were persona non grata, whilst Donald, he acted as a figure for the old Scottish ways. And Scotland, they wanted those old ways back. So with that, Donald had seized Margaret and Malcolm's sons. He sent them into Edinburgh Castle and after that, they fled to England. Now, Donald become king of Scotland. Now, there's very little known of what Donald was actually like as a king, as most of his time over the next few years, it was dominated by conflicts between him and his nephews. Now, all his nephews had the back in from William II of England, King of England, and they were all staying in England at the King's pleasure. Now, William, he had formed a good alliance with Malcolm's eldest son, Duncan, from his first marriage. Now, Duncan, he had been in England since he was a child when his father had to hand him over to William the Conqueror as part of a peace treaty in 1072. Since then, Duncan had been brought up in the Norman court, both in England and Normandy, and he had been trained as a Norman knight. Um, but he had never been back to Scotland. And he was a respected figure at the Anglo-Norman court. Duncan had also seen William Rufus as his superior. So in 1094, Duncan was given an army and he was sent off to Scotland. Now, this is the real annoying part. We don't know if there was any battles between Donald and Duncan. But what we do know is that Duncan succeeded in taking the throne, throwing off his uncle, Donald, and Donald, he retreated to the Highlands. Now, Duncan, who was now Duncan II, hadn't really got the chance to enjoy his time as king. Now, as we know, Duncan hadn't stepped foot in Scotland for over 20 years, and he soon proved to be very very unpopular and he had faced various uprisings which he had only managed to stop was when he sent home his foreign troops. Now the moment he done that he was left extremely vulnerable and later that year in 1094 Duncan was assassinated and Donald, he come back to the Scottish throne. Now, by this time, Donald, he wasn't alone. Somehow he had made contact with Edmund, who was um, Malcolm and Margaret's eldest surviving son and he had made some kind of murky agreement with his nephew. Now Donald, he was king, he, he remained king, but it appears that Edmund had been given Strathclyde to rule and it was quite possibly seen as Donald's heir. And it's really unclear on how the working relationship worked but Edmund isn't really acknowledged as king. Anyway, the New Deal didn't go down too well with Edmund's younger brothers, nor did it go down too well with the English king, William Rufus. So William, he took advantage. He sent 
the next eldest son, who was Edgar, um, to Scotland with an army that was commanded by Edgar's maternal uncle, Edgar the Eighthling. And this was in 1097. So the invasion, the invasion was a success. And this time, instead of fleeing, um, Donald and Edmund were captured. Now, Edmund, he was sent to be a monk in Somerset, whilst Donald, he was kept in prison in Scotland. And he seemed, Edgar seemed to have spared his life for quite some time. That was until 1099 when Edgar was out of the country and Donald was caught plotting against Edgar. So Donald's luck had finally run out. He was brutally blinded where he would later die of his um, wounds. So Donald's successes were ultimately outweighed by his defeat. Yes, he had won the Scottish throne twice, but he had also lost it twice. But in all fairness, the odds were really stacked against him. He had too many nephews and also he had the King of England who had the military forces and Donald he also had no sons. So it gives more to the possibility that he had acknowledged his nephew Edmund as his heir. But he did have one daughter named Bethuk. And from there, there is a descendant named John Conwen of Badenoch. I think I pronounced that right. Apologies if I haven't. And he would make a claim to the Scottish throne in 1291. And that is that. That is Donald's story. I hope you enjoyed it. I quite liked it. I do like it when there's a bit of conflict between her and the nephews over, over power the uncle and let's face it we hear it time and time again and it certainly won't be the last time we hear it now i hope you enjoyed the video please do like and subscribe and all the good stuff and i will be back next week with another video please do look after yourselves and i'll see you soon bye oh. hello 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 hello